Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and to today's video. Today I'm going to be sharing with you a few tips and the process to drawing this really really small tiger's eye. So if you're interested in drawing eyes, getting them nice and glassy, and also interested in learning a little bit about fur and stripes in fur and that kind of thing, then this is going to be the video for you. Before we get into the video though, I do just want to mention that I do have a giveaway running over on Patreon and my website for those subscribed during the month of March. I'm giving away a set of 120 polychromos and the links to both my website and Patreon are in the description below. If you subscribe in the month of March or you are a continued subscriber through March, then you will be entered automatically into the 120 set giveaway. So check those links if you want to win yourself those pencils. But let's get into the video. So the first thing that I have done is just outlined my drawing and my drawing scale here is three inches by three inches so it's quite small and one of the first things that I always do when I'm drawing eyes is gently outline the um, pupil, the iris and then any kind of outside eyelids and that kind of thing. I just use a dark sepia pencil, I've used a light pressure at first and then I go in and kind of map out any kind of really solid dark areas and then I use a little bit of a harder pressure to get those areas really nice and dark. The reason that I add the outsides and the pupil and all the dark areas in first is so that I can judge the values a little bit better within the eye so the lighter values end up being quite nice and light and then I can judge any midtones and all of that. So I make sure that I get these dark areas in first. As I said I've just used a dark sepia pencil and I'm also using a little bit of sky blue to overlay to give it kind of like a little bit of a blue hint kind of make it look a little bit watery that kind of thing and then I'm just kind of adding in the um, water line of the eyelids and everything just using a base layer of warm grey one then going over with some sky blue and then gently layering over with some dark indigo using a really light pressure and shading back and forth there's no like direction or anything on this particular patch of the eye so I'm not following the fur direction or working in a particular direction. I'm kind of moving back and forth and then going over in a different direction, kind of like a cross hatching technique to really get a really great coverage. And I'm also exerting a little bit of pressure on some of the lighter pencils as I'm layering those up to help with blending, along with using my Holbein soft white pencil as well. When I'm adding in the waterline for this, I do end up having to go in and re-darken around the eye a little bit as well. So when you are adding in any kind of surrounding areas you will find that your dark areas that you've added in initially tend to look a little bit light so you're kind of having to readjust as you're going through the process. For the actual eye itself I'm using an initial layer of green gold using a light pressure and this time I'm using small circles so within the actual eye itself instead of going in a shading direction and then in an opposite shading direction I find that you get a really nice effect when you use small open-ended circles uh, kind of like a scrumbling technique just overlapping these circles one on top of one another it creates a really nice smooth surface and it really gets into the tooth of the paper and covers the paper nicely much better than when you're just shading and it gives you that glassy look towards the end as well i'm then layering in some darker oranges some cadmium orange some burnt sienna middle cadmium red around the edges you can see on this particular eye that I've kind of got really dark outer edges and it gets lighter towards the pupil and then just around the pupil there is a little bit of a darker shadow as well. For that I've used some green and I've also used some dark indigo as well. And around the highlight you often find some of the darker shadows as well. So I've added in some walnut brown, some burnt sienna, caput mortem violet around there to make that highlight really stand out. And I've also used the white pencil to do some blending within the eye. And again, I've used that kind of circular motion going round and round to help to blend that. So the same motion that I've used for filling in the colours of the eye. When working on the eye as well, I've made sure to work from light to dark. So starting with those lighter yellow tones and then working more towards the darker reds and browns. And then going back in with the lighter colours to do a little bit of blending and then working with the white and blending and that kind of thing. The fur process for this, the first thing that I've done before adding in any fur is use an embossing tool to add in the whiskers and any kind of fine lines that I can see around the eye. Then, first of all, I'm adding in the white areas of the eye and I've just used a layer of warm grey one to um, fill in all of those white areas. I've worked in the direction of the fur as well. And then I have uh, used a warm grey 3, slightly darker pencil to add in a little bit of shading where you've got some of the dark areas and the orange areas kind of 
meeting this white area so I've kind of darkened up the edges and then I've added in a few kind of fur lines going through the initial layer of the warm grey one as well. I've then gone in and added a little bit of orange where I've got the orange areas meeting and I'm using the walnut brown pencil and the dark sepia to add in the initial kind of fur strokes of the darker areas, so the dark stripes and all of that kind of thing. I've also used the walnut brown to add some fur lines coming from the eye so that you get that nice kind of overlay from the eye to the fur, so it's not just eye then fur, you've got that nice overlap and that kind of gradation of the eyelashes coming over the little white area just above the eye. I'm then adding in the orange areas and the darker areas. I've initially put down a layer of walnut brown and some burnt ochre for the orange areas. For the darker areas, I have used a light layer of dark sepia. I've also used some dark indigo over there as well and over the top of the dark indigo I will be adding in the walnut brown and adding walnut brown and dark indigo together creates a really nice dark tone it's much better than using like straight black or straight dark sepia of course I will use dark sepia and other colors over the top but it just adds that little extra depth and also it adds more layers to your piece as well so that you get more coverage and a nice solid dark area so in the case of stripes where you've got the white fur overlapping the dark and then the dark overlapping the white depending on which direction the fur is going in. For the white fur overlapping the dark area, what I've done there is I've worked from the middle of the dark area and backwards into the white area, so in the opposite direction that the fur is going. And that creates a really nice natural overlap of the white fur over the dark fur. And then for the dark fur over the white fur, I've worked from the middle of the dark patch in the direction of the fur so it overlaps the white and that creates a nice natural overlap for that as well. So there's a, a few different ways of working depending on what kind of fur is overlapping what. So yeah, if you've got dark fur overlapping light you want to work in the direction of the fur and if you've got darker, white of fur overlapping darker fur then you want to work in the opposite direction. Hopefully that makes sense to you guys. For the orange fur, I've just put down a base layer of, um, a really light layer of burnt ochre. I've added in some terracotta, just shading in the direction of the fur. For the darker patches, I've added in some burnt sienna, some caput mortem violet. And to give it a bit more of like a, a really vibrant orange hue, I've added in some cadmium orange as well. That really helps to make the orange really vibrant by adding in those kind of unnatural orange colours. I've also, if I needed a little bit of shaded added shading, added in a little bit of green here and there. I've also added in walnut brown where we do have dark areas as well. For, in, for the initial base layers of the fur, I have used a shading motion and then for the darker colours then I've used a fur technique. If you want more direction on the fur technique and everything, I'm going to leave a video in the description below where I go through in depth my fur technique and um, there's a whole fur series as well if you want to watch that but that is pretty much it what I wanted to cover in this really small study I've given you some solid eye tips and a little bit about the fur if you want to learn in depth then head on over to patreon or to my website again if you sign up then you will be automatically entered into the polychromos draw I really hope that you enjoyed this video and I will catch you guys in the next one bye